I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of the Tech Field Day events, and the what you're about to watch here is a presentation where uh, Rubrik is going to be presenting to a panel of delegates from around the world. These folks specialize in enterprise IT technology, and they are here to ask questions and discuss and learn about the technology. If you're interested in learning more about this event, you can find out by going to techfieldday.com. And if you enjoyed this video, you can find a lot more at youtube.com slash techfieldday, or just use the Google. So as Chris said, um, I'm here to show, you, uh, show the Linux protection uh, functionality. <coughs> and so I want to emphasize that everything Chris just showed about uh, the SLA domains, the policies that we've defined, they apply uh, equally to Linux file sets as well as to the MS SQL, which he'll, uh, he'll show later, and the uh, VMware virtual VMs, which we've, uh, Rubrik has had for over a year now. Uh, here we have some content courtesy of uh, actually Andrew over there, who just joined us this week. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, <coughs> Let me get over to my hosts. Um, so a lot of our customers, uh, you know, they love what we've been doing for VMware uh, VMs, making it very simple to apply these policies that Chris just showed uh, to set up auto, um, automatically set up prote uh, protection for their uh, VMware hosts and just set it and forget it and then just you know, go about their, uh, the rest of their day. Uh, so we want to bring that same functionality to any applications they have which are still running on physical hosts. And what I'll be showing is physical Linux hosts. Um, Let's see here. So this uh, this site that we just, that we, we have here is actually sorry. Where is it? So this WordPress site here actually is running on these Linux hosts that I am SSH into, into currently. And so for those of you who who know WordPress, WordPress uh, a WordPress install actually consists of both uh, file data, at, which are user uploads and user content, as well as uh, database data tracking all the metadata about that content. Uh, and so that's a, kind of a good use case for. Uh, demonstrating a Linux backup. So let's get into... Sorry, I, I actually am unfamiliar with this. I, I threw a Linux guy into a Windows laptop. Let's I'm see. a real jerk. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. In the demo, even. Yeah. <laughs> go, go big or go home. <clears throat> Close enough. Uh, so you can see the, the WordPress directory here. Uh, looks pretty typical. Um, these are all the file contents which we will hope to be backing up. And then if I get into the MySQL server, uh, you'd see also you'd see also a pretty typical Word, uh, WordPress MySQL database. Um, so we'll go to back that up. Let's go into the rubric UI now. Uh, so I'll primarily look at this, this tab here with Linux hosts. So the hosts that I have are actually these named demo. Uh, so as Chris was saying, what we, we have here is the, the hierarchy of uh, objects within Linux are the physical host, then down into phys the physical host you have the file sets. Uh, now each file set represents the set of files that we're interested in protecting on a Linux host. Uh, a file set is actually um, tied to a host. Uh, the notion of, a so suppose you want to back up uh, the var log directory on many hosts. That's actually a very common pattern. So we also offer the notion of uh, file set templates, which are defined here. So these are more kind of reusable uh, specs of the files that we'd like to back up. And so you can see I've, I've actually already protected uh, the two hosts that we're interested in. And so I've defined file sets for the etsy directory uh, on, on, the, on this uh, MySQL server, uh, the etsy directory, the var log directory, and, a, and the MySQL dump, which I'll get into. Uh, somebody else actually added this test uh, file set. As, as, as we mentioned, our sales engineers use this as a live demo system, so pr there's probably another demo going on right now. Uh, Break it. I could. <laughs> um, so why don't we actually start at the beginning? Uh, since I already protected these hosts, I, I feel like it's a more uh, concrete story if I start from the beginning with a new host. Uh, so let's go actually do that. Uh, so that's where I have the third host that I messaged into here. This is a clean, uh, a clean Linux host that I actually just provisioned this morning. There's not really anything on it, um, but let's see what it looks like to actually protect a new host. So I go into the host section here. I would, uh, so I choose to add a Linux host. Uh, so this is the first screen I would see. Uh, you would see as you are trying to protect a new Linux host. Uh, so we do actually require an agent. That's because unlike you know VMware VMs, we don't just have 
automatic discovery of these physical hosts, which is, are just at some random IP address. We also don't automatically have a way to read the data out of them. So we provide a handy link for you to download a, the rubric agent. You can see it's really just one file. It's this rubric agent RPM file. I forget how big it is. I'm actually not going to download it now because I don't trust the Wi-Fi exactly. <laughs> uh, so I, have to, I did pre-download it. Uh, so I did pre-download it, and I did add it into, uh, upload it into my Linux host here. So that's this file. I guess I can see how big it is now while I'm at it. Uh, this is 5 megs. You can see it's not, not really a big agent. It's very lightweight. Uh, to install it is very simple. Uh, so we support uh, CentOS 5, 6, and 7, as well as, uh, well, so we support Red Hat 5, 6, and 7, which means we support CentOS 5, 6, 7. Uh, I'm running a CentOS 7 here, and to install it is just like with any other RPM you're familiar with. Uh, you go rpm-i, this file. Uh, it'll go ahead and run through that install. You can see it's very simple, very quick. Uh, it's already started a daemon, uh, so now we have on this VM an authenticated uh, rubric agent running in the background, you know, constantly listening for requests from the rubric cluster. Uh, as the rubric cluster comes in and wants to take a snapshot, it will request little various bits of metadata like what are the, you know, what are the modification timestamps of the file sets I'm interested in, let me know which ones have been uh, updated since the last backup, and then later, uh, as we figure out the content that we need to pull, rubric will pull that data through the agent. Sorry, I missed that. The RPM comes from the rubric cluster itself? Uh, yeah, so okay. I was on the UI here, and so as, as I was adding a new host, uh, it prompted me and reminded me that you know, I need to install this RPM onto the, onto the uh, Linux host. Got it. Yep. Uh, so now that I have installed the RPM, uh, the agent is installed and it is listening. So I'm ready to actually add my host by IP or host name, of course. Uh, the host name of my machine was any Linux. Let me just double check that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so this is just the host name. The rubric cluster, once I add it, will resolve that name. Uh, find the IP, start, start talking to the rubric agent that's installed on that host. So this host should show up in, now in my list of uh, my list of hosts, and I, I can see it there. And you can see that it's connected. That's because the agent is installed, it's running. So this means it's actually fully operational. Uh, and now I'd, you know, I'd probably like to start protecting something on this host, right? So I very easily go to add a file set. As I was mentioning before, we offer the template functionality to sort of reuse the file set spec uh, specifications across uh, multiple hosts. So it's very common that you'd probably want to protect, uh, sorry, I chose cancel or custom. So it's pretty common that you want, you'd want to protect the var log directory on any host. So that's what I'd like to do if nobody's removed it. So can I you select that. multiple from there or no? Uh, pretty sure you can. Actually, it shouldn't be trying that right now, but... From the modal, you can't, but you could also script it the API right. or just create a template that has multiple sets in there. You can do includes, excludes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I have added this file set. That defines the file set that I'm interested in on this host. Now to protect it, I really just you know, click through, uh, manage protection for it, and then I decide which of these SLAs, which we've previously defined, I'd like to use uh, uh, for this file set. So I click to submit, and it adds it to the SLA domain, and that's actually it. So now I've actually connected to a new Linux host. I've defined the files that I'm interested in backing up. I've defined the policy for backing up and retaining those snapshots of these file sets, and Rubrik will take care of the rest for me. Um, so that's for a new host. Uh, as I was mentioning, it's kind of more interesting to look at some data that existed uh, earlier. Uh, we're not really going to sit here and wait I don't know what SLA you define, like four hours. <laughs> We're not going to sit here for the next four hours to wait for a snapshot to come in. Uh, so I'd like to go into the, uh, the file sets that I already uh, started protecting yesterday, starting with, so let's start with a simpler case. The, I should have named that better. So with that, is there any manual sort of way to protect something, just one off? Just uh, yeah, so uh, even, even here where I am, uh, I've actually, I, did, I don't actually have to add anything to a policy. If I just define a file set, that's, a, that's an object that Rubrik is aware of and knows how to back up. I can come to this page anytime and you can click on this take on demand snapshot okay. and that'll drive a, drive a backup right there. Uh, oh, I found the wrong thing, sorry. Uh, 
So this is a file set that I defined yesterday and started backing up. Uh, this is the var www directory on the WordPress server. Uh, so you can see the SLA, I guess, uh, so I picked the gold SLA. So it's been taking a backup every four hours, and so we've been meeting that SLA pretty well. Uh, this latest snapshot you'll see, uh, this, is a, this is a standard uh, feature of, act of rubric snapshots, actually. So any object you backup uh, offers this granular recovery and uh, browsing of the content of the object. So since this is a file set, what we have is my var www HTML WordPress directory. And so in here, we start to see the very familiar contents of uh, my WordPress install, uh, including all of all these plugins. <coughs> so everything in that directory. And so at this point, what I could choose to do is uh, restore just one file. Let me go back to a more interesting file. Uh, so you, can you have a few options here. Uh, you can choose to download the file into your, basically into your client through the web interface. Uh, that's kind of handy if you just want to inspect it, maybe. Uh, you can choose the restore option, which is an in-place restore of the original file at the location where it's supposed to live. So this, is, this use case here would be, you know, somebody has accidentally deleted that file or corrupted that file. You just want to restore it in place. Another use case is to actually export it to a different uh, Linux host, uh, which actually is what I'll show here, because it's the least destruct, uh, sort of the easiest thing to show. Can you set permissions to limit what a user could do, whether it be restore or download or export? Uh, great, great question. So our uh, role-based access control underneath the underneath the hood is pretty much that granular. We do define individual permissions, and the intention is to allow administrators to actually define their own roles, custom roles, uh, for you know this type of role should only be able to do export or only do restore, uh, and so that's all possible underneath the hood. Uh, as of today, I believe we actually own. Uh, our role-based access, access control is not uh, uh, exposing the functionality to define custom roles. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of built-in roles. I think we have a, uh, a full admin, an end user, and I'm not sure if we have some kind of intermediate admin. Um, uh, but the answer is that that's, you know, that's coming. Uh, custom roles is something that uh, many uh, customers have already been asking for. As soon as they got their hands on uh, the RBAC of today, they kind of asked, OK, well, I'd like to define custom roles. Yep. So with that end user role, does that mean that you you can expose the portal and let users go in and do self service uh, restores? Yeah, uh, so that's exactly the use case. Um, that's actually something that I think Chris will be going into. Yep. Yeah, so Chris will be logging in as the end user role uh, account for a database, and that account only has access to that database that he's interested in restoring. And can you attach, say, multiple active directories to this so you could actually have multi tenancy within that and each different tenant be able to do their own restores? Correct. Like it? <coughs> is the, sort of, oh. Go ahead. Sure. What sort of authentication is used for the uh, RPM host? Uh, so it is a TLS connection, uh, and it's authenticated in both directions. So I actually glossed over this. Um, so I, I, I won't go back to it. But where I was where I was offered a download link. The reason we offer that convenience is because actually this RPM comes bundled with a key that's specific to that rubric cluster. Yeah. And that key is used by the Linux host to authenticate that only this rubric cluster can actually pull data out of, out of it. And then the rubric cluster will also authenticate the Linux host that it talks to. <coughs> On the very first connection, it's kind of like connecting to a, a new SSH host. You're, you're prompted and you're asked, are you sure you, you want to connect to this new host? Uh, but all subsequent connections will authenticate using the key that we've downloaded at that point, and we'll know which, uh, which Linux host we're talking to. Uh, where was I, actually? Restore your file. Yeah, I don't know why I came back out to this directory, though. Um, WordPress. So maybe I wanted, uh, maybe you want to uh, pull back your wp-config.php. So let's go ahead and export that to my host here. Uh, so I'll just tell it where I want to put it, which I'll just put into a temp somewhere. And so this begins, technically what this is beginning is a lot of what Adam just showed you with uh, materializing the, the links, the metadata links to all the contents of the files, uh, kind of live mounting it internally, and then pushing that out through the agent to the host. Uh, but it happens pretty quickly uh, because, again, th there's not really any data movement other than from the rubric cluster into the host. So. 
And so this is my wp-config.php file that I had on the uh, WordPress server, and this is the contents of it. It makes a lot of sense, I think. Except. Um, so that was the file set for, so we've covered the file set for uh, et, uh, var log and var www, and these are actually basic cases because these are actually just files that, other than the occasional upload that a user is doing, they're not actually changing very much. Um, but a major concern that uh, we would have when we're backing up something that's more live and more transactional like a database is that we actually need to take a consistent uh, uh, snapshot of that data rather than reading kind of a partial copy that was written at some time and then another, uh, another piece of the copy that was written at another time. Uh, so Rubrik does offer a pre and post scripts feature for these Linux backups. And so the way that works is uh, actually as a part of the definition of the file set. So if you go into the MySQL dump file set that I've defined for the MySQL host, uh, one of the things I can edit here, oh sorry, not edit here, but rather configure scripts. Uh, so you just specify the location of the scripts that you want to run as part of, uh, as your prescript and as your, <coughs> as your postscript. These, these are very familiar features, I'm sure, to anybody who's used backup and recovery products before. Uh, so I've set some very obvious locations just to make things easy for myself. Uh, so if I go over to my hosts, uh, let's go over here. So this is a very simple uh, prescript that we have on the MySQL host. All it's doing is going through, iterating through the databases that are on that server and running MySQL dump on them. So what this will do is it'll yield a consistent, uh, consistent uh, copy of the database on some other alternate uh, location on your file system. Uh, and then that's actually what, I def what we define in the file set to backup. Uh, once I get to it. And that script's stored on the host that you're actually. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so. We, we're backing up the varlib mysql dump directory. Uh, it's named mysql dump. And so if we look at the snapshots for this file set, we'll end up seeing varlib mysql dump. We'll end up seeing the, the basically the database that is that are there. And these are files that I can restore or export just the same as I did for the WordPress files. Uh, and then of course, to actually go through a full recovery for a MySQL, a MySQL dump style backup, you'd then have to take that file uh, run it through my, the MySQL command on the database server, uh, and that's your restore. Um, so before I finish, uh, I mean, I've exercised pretty much all the functionality. I wanted to go through the definition of file sets quickly. I may have skipped over that a little easily. Uh, so as we define file sets, it's made, you know, it's kind of inspired by the rsync uh, include and exclude type of syntax, but hopefully simplified a lot more for users. Uh, so this, uh, this is just the name. Uh, the first part of the spec specification is the uh, list of paths that you'd like to include. Then, because you often have some things that are either sensitive or not interesting for backup to exclude in that, in that directories, uh, you have, have an ability to exclude things from there. And then finally, hopefully you don't actually need this very often, but in case you need a third level of override where you want to include some things back from those excluded directories, you can also in include them back. Uh, but I personally would recommend primarily thinking in terms of one level of include and one level of exclude. Uh, other things worth mentioning are we don't, by default, we won't uh, copy uh, things that are on remote NFS mounts. Uh, usually that's not what somebody's in interested in backing up. But we do have a checkbox here to enable that if that's actually desirable. <coughs> okay, so that's actually all there is to uh, Linux host backup and recovery with uh, Rubrik. Uh, again, this, this all applies under the same SLAs. We, we've been reusing the same SLAs all day here, uh, the gold, silver, bronze that come default, and the tech field day one that Chris defined. Uh, 